Christians, happy Easter. Hope you've been able to celebrate with your families this week the resurrection of our Lord from the dead, that great feast, that event of history, that crowning uh, victory over sin and death, our Lord showing forth his divinity, raising himself from the dead, um, verifying everything that he said that he taught. The basis of our faith, this, this incredible act of the God-man. It gives us all hope. Uh, this is our promise um, from our Lord. We remain faithful to him. We will be have, live in the glorified state forever with him. At the end of the octave of Easter, these eight days, is a tremendous feast, the Feast of Mercy. Given its title by St. John Paul II in 2000 when he canonized the Apostle of Mercy, that would be St. Faustina Kowalska who was a cloistered nun who died in 1938 at the age of 33. She only had three years of formal education. She was given the message of mercy by our Lord in his revelations to her from 1931 to 1938. The diary of St. Faustina, uh, Diary of Divine Mercy, if you ever have an opportunity to get a hold of it, it's about this thick, but just beautiful, the different... Um, you know, words our Lord says to her, but also to all of us about his mercy. I'll just read a, a couple of them because of, you know, this Feast of Mercy, just incredible. Our Lord asked for it himself, but he, he speaks of how uh, on the Feast of Mercy that the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. And of course, the church has, um, has given us the opportunity to go to confession or Holy Communion as soon as we possibly can, especially with the, the coronavirus uh, limitations. Our Lord also taught Faustina the prayer called the Chapel of Divine Mercy, where you pray on, basically use the rosary beads, pray a short little prayer, it takes about seven or eight minutes, asking, imploring his mercy. Um, and that's a just a tremendous prayer. He says, whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death. Even if they were a sinner most hardened, if he were to recite this chaplet only once, he would receive grace from my infinite mercy. Okay. So our Lord wants to bestow his mercy. Mercy is what takes away suffering. So our Lord, in bestowing his mercy, takes away sin. He can also take away the effects of sin. But sometimes he allows the effects of sin in the world to bring about a greater good. That's what we're going through right now with the coronavirus. Hopefully more people are coming to him, focusing more on him, relying more upon him. Now, our Lord's great act of mercy was when he died on the cross. But our Lord appeared to St. Faustina. He appeared with, you know, in this way, reminding us of his crucifixion where blood and water flowed from his side when he was pierced. So our Lord told Faustina the, the white here was, that was for the water, baptism, when we're, you know, deemed righteous by our Lord, given his grace. And then the red would be the blood and the blood of Christ that the Eucharist gives us life. Um, so this is a tremendous feast on Sunday, this coming Sunday, the Feast of Mercy. We'll have um, adoration as we have, have been having in the main, in the main church around the clock, but from two to three that day, we'll move our Lord out outside the church so we can have a little drive through adoration, can't get out of our cars, um, but just some time there and we'll do the Divine Mercy Chaplet from uh, three to 3.15, we'll live stream that so you can hear it, watch it, your cell phones uh, and digital devices. Again, happy Easter, God bless you.